All right, so this is worksheet one, first day on the quadratic review, but it starts with a couple linear review questions. Number one, um, on the quiz was a question like this, and some of you left it and dealt with the fractions. I really don't want you to get used to doing that way. We need to multiply through by the common denominator, which in this problem would be six. So we're going to multiply both sides by a six. Okay, and there's a 1 in front of that x, so 6 times 1 divided by 2 will be 3x. 6 times 5 will be 30. Over here, 6 times 1 divided by 3 will be what? 2, and that one has an x, and minus 7. Okay, let's see, what do we get? Negative 37, anybody? I'm out of room, but did did someone else get that? What did I? Oh, thank you. You gotta stop me sooner. <sighs> okay, this is, should be minus 42. Please don't be afraid to yell at me, cause I do stuff wrong all the time, and I'm not one of those teachers who will tell you, "Oh, I meant to do that." I'll tell you, I was just being silly. Negative 72, did someone get that? Okay. Now, on the one that had fraction on the quiz, it, it was really ugly. I think it was like 2 fifths times 3 sevenths x minus 9, something disgusting like that. You have to distribute before you try to get rid of the fractions. Okay, guys? So here, if we distribute first, we get 2x minus 8, I think. I'm not feeling confident about anything at the moment. 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds times 9 is 6. How did I do this time? Okay. Now, I had somebody on the quiz decide to just multiply this side by 3. That breaks the golden rule of algebra, right? What you got to do to one side, going to do to one side, you got to do to both. So if I multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the fractions, and some of you probably could finish that one without getting rid of the fractions. We would have 6x minus 24 equals 2x plus 18. Then what? What do you want to do next? Subtract 2x and then add 24. 24, 34, 44, 42. How did I do? Um, this directions don't specify, but the quiz did specify. So I was mean. Ask Fatih. He hates me. <laughs> he answered all the questions right, but at least one of them, he didn't write a fraction anywhere. He just left it as an exact decimal, and it said in the direction, simplified improper fractions. So I gave him a four. Now, if it was the third time we tested that, and I knew Fatih knew how to do all those, I probably would have just left it a five. Cause it's not, but it's the first time we've seen it, so we will see it again at some point. This reduces by two to 21 over two. Anybody? All right, quadratic stuff, the new stuff for the day. So today we're gonna, we've already done the factoring stuff kind of, we're gonna work some more on factoring today. And we're going to do some square rooting business, including a little review of completing the square, nothing complicated. And we're going to talk about discriminant and quadratic formula real quick. Doesn't that sound all fun? All right, so how could we do these? It says without using quadratic formula. So what do you want to do? Guys, by the way, when I put this on the next quiz, I always get someone who decides there should be an X here and do quadratic formula. There's no x there, so we don't have to. Don't magically think there is. What do we want to do? Um, we could subtract the 16 and maybe do some factoring, but if we can isolate and there's only an x squared, and it doesn't say you have to factor, let's just add the 5 so we can isolate the x squared. Divide. Now. If I graphed this, just trying to help you see this, if I graphed this as a parabola and the line y equals 7, there would be two points of intersection, okay? 
if I square root both sides of this, the technical solution to that is the absolute value of x equals the square root of 7. We don't ever write that. We're too lazy. We just think when you square root, you got to remember to put what? Plus or minus. Okay, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. I'm just going to leave it square root of 7. I don't care about decimals. Let's go with exact answers today. Does that help you understand why there's two solutions? All right, over here, oh, I always have somebody who wants to distribute. First of all, can we, if we wanted to distribute for fun, could we? Order of operations say you'd have to take care of the exponent first, right? You'd have to FOIL it all out, then distribute the three. Then simplify everything on the left side, move everything from the right side to the left, and do quadratic formula or factor it again. Can we just isolate that quantity? How could we isolate that quantity and save ourselves a whole lot of heartache? Add 10, divide by 3. We're just pretending that parenthesis is just, 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 we don't care what's in it. We're just solving for what's in the parenthesis. Once I've isolated the parentheses, then what can I do? Square root both sides. As soon as I square root a quantity that had a squared, it's really an absolute value. I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to remember to write what over here? Plus or minus 5. Because if I graphed that original one, x plus 2 would have been a parabola over here. 25 would have been a line way up here, but it would have crossed twice, okay? All right, now what do I have to do? Subtract the 2, which will give me x equals negative 2 plus or minus 5. And as a pre-calc student, I'm not going to give you credit for that, okay? You need to tell me what two numbers that is. What's negative 2 plus 5? 3 and negative 2 minus 5? Everybody good? What about 5? Same kind, but just a little tw twerk to it. What do we do? If we square root both sides, we get x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. If we add the 3 over to the other side, we have a 3 added to plus or minus square root of 5. Or you could write plus or minus square root of 5 with the 3 on the back, plus 3. Just make sure it's not under the radical. And those are two exact answers, right? You could type it in two separate times if you wanted decimal approximations, but we don't need to. Anybody question on those three? Need to see another example of one of those. This is the one most students struggle with because they forget that it's possible to isolate it. They automatically see that and start distributing and foiling and doing junk. Okay, think about whether you could square root. These say completing the square. So unfortunately, we're going to do completing the square. Ready? Do you remember this? You want everything with an x on one side and everything without an x on the other side. Then we do the add a blank to both sides. Does that help you remember what completing the square is? Okay. Then in order to make this side a perfect square, that's our goal. The rule is you, as long as there's no coefficient, okay, you take half of the b term. So this is b divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and it's positive. Now, in order for this to be equivalent, x plus 3 times x plus 3 would have foiled out to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we have to put a 9 there. So whatever you put in the parentheses, you square. And then, golden rule of algebra, what you did to this side, you got to do to this side, yes? Okay, so what were the three rules? 
So it's x squared plus bx plus blank equals, I'm just going to call this m, no, p, q, anything over there, okay? So you did x plus, and you divided by 2, right? And then you squared the top and the bottom, which would be b squared over 4, which is just disgusting if you wanted a formula. Yeah, you can't read that. Let me try again. If anybody really wants to see it as a formula, okay, we'll write x squared plus bx plus, no, where's this, where did that squared come from? I'm making stuff up. Whatever you moved over here, okay, whether you call it negative c or c or p or some number that you moved over here. Then it's x plus, you take the b and divide it by 2, and you put it in the parentheses, and then you square that quantity. I'm just going to write it like this. That's a little less confusing. Whatever that number is, you square it, and you add it to both sides. Is that a little better? And this equals whatever this mess simplifies down to. I mean, there's fancy ways to write it. I'm just trying to write it so it makes a little bit of sense. All right, we're not done. Help me finish this. What did we get on this one? Equals 7 plus 9 is 16. Then what? The whole purpose of completing the square with an equation like this is to be able to square root it. So then we get x plus 3 equals, what do we have to remember? plus or minus 4, x equals, I'm going to subtract that 3 over to the other side. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Did I get that right? So it was negative 3 plus or minus 4, if you need to write that somewhere. That problem would have solved by factoring. If it says solve by completing the square on the quiz, I'm looking for the concept of completing the square, okay? Could you have checked by factoring? Absolutely. All right, what about this next one? Somebody talk me through it quickly. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, might not come out nice, though. I don't know. x squared minus 10x plus blank equals 11 plus blank. Then what? x minus, and you take half, so you get 5, and then you square it and put it in the blank. And over here we get 36. This one does come out nice, yes? Square root. Five plus or minus six simplifies to eleven or negative one. Did someone get those answers? How'd I do? Too fast, Lucia. Next one has a fraction, I think, because the B is odd. But what's the first step we should probably do? Yeah, move the four over. I am going to picture onto a new page just so that we have room to work and I don't want to scrunch this in there and make the notes really confusing. Okay, so x squared plus 13x plus blank equals 4 plus blank and it's 4 because I added 4 to both sides, right? Okay, what's half? What goes in the parentheses? x plus we could do 6.5. Can we just write 13 over 2? Because some of you probably know how to square that. What's 13 squared? 169 over 2 squared, which is 4. All right. So now we take our handy-dandy calculator and go 4 plus 169 divided by 4, math enter, enter. I got 185 over 4. Did anybody else get that? Which 
is nice because when I go to square root, well, the top doesn't come out nice. Does the square root of 4 are nice? So we get x plus 13 over 2 equals plus or minus. How do you want to write that side? Square root of 185 and the square root of 4 is just a 2. That looks really weird. I wrote that fraction bar long. And then I'm going to subtract 3 halves over, or 13 halves. So I'm going to have negative 13 halves plus or minus the square root of 185 over 2. Um, if I do 185 divided by 5, I get 37. So is there any perfect squares that go in there? If the only thing is 5 times 37, those are primes, right? I can't break 185 down. So I don't care if you leave it like that. If you combined it, negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 185, it's all over 2. Does this look like an answer we might have gotten doing it a different way? Namely, quadratic formula, which is probably what most of us would have done instead of completing the square because it came had an odd junk in there, but either way it worked. No promises, but my guess is that there's not going to be one like that on the first quiz on completing the square. All right, we're running out of time already. Factoring, so we should be able to do these quickly. Who's got me? x minus 9, x plus 1. Is that right or not? If you foil it together, it gives you negative 9 at the back, and the two middle terms here, negative 9x and positive 1x, add up to the middle, right? So then we have to set each one equal to 0. And you wouldn't have to show that step. I would believe that you could do that in your head. But we get x equals 9 and negative 1. I can't even read my own handwriting. I thought that said 4. Any questions? What's the first thing we need to do on number 10? Take out a 2. Could we divide the whole thing by 2? We could, because it doesn't say like equals y. It says equals 0. You could divide out the 2. We can leave it, but when we get to the end and we play the game I like to call take your turn being equal to 0, let's see, how's this going to factor? x plus 7 and x minus 2. There are three things here that are all multiplied to make 0. So one of them has to equal 0 or more. Can 2 equal 0? So that was just garbage anyway. Could have divided it out, okay? So we get negative 7 or 2. They are both solutions, but you put in either the negative 7 or the 2 to solve. All right, this says factoring. How does this factor? It says solve by factoring, so I want to see factoring. It is difference of perfect squares. I know you could have added the 49 over and square rooted. I, sometimes I do factoring just because it always, I never get forget to put down plus or minus when I do factoring, right? Because I remind myself I'm getting two solutions. All right, three more factoring just for fun. Am I right? Is that do I remember? Okay. What's wrong with 12 and 13? It's got to equal zero before we can play the take your turn. I cannot tell you. I promise someone will do this on the SLO test at the end of the semester. This is my favorite I want to cry moment. Someone will do this and then go, oh, well, either x is negative 8 or x minus 6 equals negative 8. Because obviously when two things multiply to make negative 8, one of them has to be negative 8, right? No, that only works with 0, right? The only way things can multiply to make 0 is one of them has to be 0. Things could multiply to be negative 8. They could be 
negative 1600 and positive 0. 0.0002 or something, okay? There's no rules about that. You have to make it equal zero. All right, someone's already got this done. How does this bad boy factor? Oh, to be a positive eight and a negative here, I need what? Two negatives, yes. If you're not good at factoring, I can help you. We can do some practice. Are you okay with me just writing x equals four or two? I don't need to play the game of writing them equal to zero. This next one though, sometimes when we do this kind, students have more trouble. They're definitely trickier because this two means we could have either a two and a one or a one and a two, not too complicated. Okay, factors of 2x could be 1 and 2 or one, 2 and 1. Factors of 3 could be what? 1 and 3. Is it going to work the way I wrote it? Inside, outside, I get 3x or 6x and 1x. Is that going to give me 1? What do you want to try? Flip which ones? Actually, it doesn't matter, but yeah. We flip this to 3 and 1. Now we get 2x here and 3x here. We want the 3x to be negative so that we'll get a negative 1 when we add them together. So, x equals 3 or negative 1? Oh, no, tell me what's wrong. If 2x minus 3 equals 0, we don't get negative, or we don't get 3, right? We get what? X equals, what did I do? Okay, I thought you were saying I factored wrong or something, as we all know that's possible. Did someone else get three halves and negative one written badly? All right, what's going on on number 14? We can take out a three or just divide it all by three because the three isn't going to make a difference. 3x squared minus 1x minus 10 equals zero. Okay, 3x only factors 3 and 1. 10 factors 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. What do you think? I don't think 1 and 10 are going to help me get a 1 in the middle because i got to multiply one of them by 3. 5 here and 2 here because that's a 6 and a 5. I had a negative 6 and a positive 5. Would that work? Okay. I did that fast. How many of you probably would have taken three or four tries to get those in the right spot? That's okay. Okay. For that reason, I'm not going to put 10 complicated factoring problems on the next quiz because some of you will be here all day. But you need to get good at this too. So when we set those equal to 0, we get what, guys? 3x plus 5 equals 0 means negative 5 over 3 and 2. Okay. What time are we done? Okay. I, I thought someone was going to say 29 and I was going to start crying. I still have 11 minutes, right? Because we need to talk about quadratic formula. Okay. Quadratic formula. Please notice it says we are solving for x from the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. b is the number in front of x, a is the number in front of the squared term, c is the constant after it's been set equal to 0. This means you take the opposite of b plus or minus in the parenthesis or in the square root, I'm sorry, is b squared minus 4ac and it's all over 2a. We're doing exact answers, so you don't want to try to type it all in your calculator. You can type in what's underneath the radical. Don't type the radical in either, just what's underneath it. And what's the big thing students get wrong, guys? If B happens to be negative, what do you have to do? Put in parentheses. So it's, sometimes it's good to just remember to put the B in parentheses no matter what. Or if the b is negative, you can go ahead and just make it a positive because once you square it, it's going to become positive anyway. 
All right, so on this one, A is 1, B is negative 4, and C is 1. Everybody in here has seen this before, right? I don't want to make anybody feel dumb if they need extra help with this. So we get X equals the opposite of B, which would be 4, plus or minus the square root of 4, negative 4, because it's negative, I'm putting parentheses, squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 1, all over 2A, which is 2 times 1. I don't know why my equal sign or my stop. Okay. All right, so I would just type in 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is what? 12. Did I lose anybody yet? Okay, someone's going to kill a kitten. <laughs> Hannah wasn't here yesterday, guys. She's really confused. Here we go, Hannah. Anytime you cancel something top and bottom that's part of a summer difference, we call it killing a kitten, okay? Because of this silly little meme, it's my favorite ever. Not that I want to kill kittens. But you can't cancel this 4 and the 2, right? It's glued to this square root. All right, this is my suggestion for simplifying this. You can do this however you want. I suggest that you break it apart and put both of those top pieces over 2 and then simplify what you can. Okay, 4 divided by 2 is 2. We need simplified radicals here. So square root of 12 is square root of 4 times square root of 3. Everybody good with that, Jazz? Square root of 4 is really 2, so we end up with 2 square roots of 3, but that had a 2 underneath it. So those simplify because they're not glued to anything else. They're their own little fraction now. So we get 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. If you don't separate it, and you just write 4 plus or minus, let's see, it was 2 square roots of 3 all over 2. That's fine. But the only way you can reduce that, too, is if it divides into both of those things, right? Because you're really factoring it out then. I think separating it helps. Students are much less likely to make a mistake and cancel something they shouldn't. All right. No crying in pre-calc. So I'm going to take these two and move them to a new page before we run out of room. Cut my scribbly notes here. What are we going to do first on 16? If you want, you could write A is 2, B is negative 6, and C is negative 5. Uh-oh, it's not at the top anymore. Do you remember the formula? It's on your paper, but X equals what? Negative b, or opposite of b, which would be 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Uh-oh. Somebody's going to get that one wrong because of the signs, right? There aren't any imaginary answers on tonight's homework, so if you get something negative under the square root, you did something wrong. And it's all over 2a, which is not 2 anymore. It's 2 times 2. So we have 6 plus or minus. If you type 36 or 6 squared or parenthesis negative 6 parenthesis squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. Let's see, 40, 76, anybody? How'd I do? No? 76? Please be checking that you're getting that because I, oh, Alyssa has that cool color too. I love that calculator. Everybody okay? All over four. 76, does four go in there? I think it does. Square root of four times... Yeah, 19. You're right. Okay, so we have 6 over 4 plus or minus 
2 square roots of 19, because the square root of 4 is 2, all over 4. So what can that reduce to? 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 19 over 2. And you can leave it like that, or you can write it 3 plus or minus the square root of 19 all over 2, separated or together, I don't care. I'm writing too big or something, because I still don't have room to do that problem. What's wrong with the setup for 17? Got to equal 0. So 3x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. A is 3, B is negative 1, C is negative 6, and it's okay if you don't write that down, if you just start in on the problem. X equals the opposite of B would be what? 1 plus or minus the square root of. B squared is just 1. Can I just do negative 1 times negative 1 in my head? Minus 4 times 3 times negative 6. Don't lose the negative all over 2 times 3. So I get 1 plus or minus the square root of 73. Did you, what did you type? I think you forgot. It was negative 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 6. Did you figure it out? Anybody else? That's called the discriminant, by the way. I want to talk more about that in one second. It, this does not simplify, yes? I can separate it if I want, but it isn't going to simplify. Okay. What we get under the radical determines the, determines the kind of answer we get. Okay. If that b squared minus 4ac part is exactly 0, it means there's only one real solution. Do we have that right there? Okay, and it's real. B squared minus 4ac has a negative value. It means there's two complex solutions, but no real. And what's the other option? If b squared minus 4ac is positive or greater than 0, yes, then there's two um, real solutions. Yeah, they could be rational or irrational. All right. So super fast. If I do b squared minus 4ac on this problem, I get 25 minus 8 is 17 positive. So there are two real solutions. The discriminant is equal to 17, two real solutions. If I do b squared minus 4a, that was a negative 3, c is a negative 10. Somebody type in this. Anybody do this already? 120 negative, right? Is it negative 95, anybody? I'm probably wrong. I think I might be right. No real or too complex solution. Yes? Am I good? Okay. Last one is going to be zero, I'm guessing. What do you think? <laughs> B squared minus 4ac, that comes out zero. And when the discriminant is zero, it means there's only one real solution. One multiple choice question left. Did I manage to get through everything? Okay. Discriminant, B squared. Minus 4ac, I might need help. 36 times 4 is 72, 144. I think it's 0. Did anybody do it? So that means there's a unique real solution. We made it. Okay. So worksheet 2, it says you only have to do the evens, okay? It says on the assignment sheet, or it says up here, do the evens. 
The assignment sheet, remember, is the back of the gold sheet down here at the bottom. It says exactly which problems you have to do, okay? You can do all for extra practice.